Whoa, whoa, whoa! <coughs> oh, hopefully the uh, music's loud enough. Welcome, 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 guys, to um, a big video, hopefully. Uh, because it's a big day for Guild Wars 2. Um, obvious, I mean, how many times am I going to keep recapping the new status quo? I assume everybody already knows at this point, but one more time. For good luck, uh, we've moved away from normal expansions. We've moved away from normal living world. We're now doing, like, mini x packs. I don't actually really think that's a phrase the studio themselves have used, by the way, but... Essentially, there are cheaper expansions, one per year, and between the two, there are three major patches, which they're not calling Living World. What, they're, what they want you to think of these as are expansions to the expansion itself, like parts of the expansion itself. So, Secrets of the Obscure was a little, you know, shorter than a normal product. We paid less money for it. But also, they're saying, well, look, the other parts of this story, the other parts of the content you're getting are coming later so unlike living world we don't have to pay for what we're about to play it's free uh that caveat kind of isn't as exciting as it really you might think it is because you know if you were a a, a normal player anyway a dedicated player anyway i should say that kept the game installed you would get the living world releases free anyway but this stuff's free forever it's just a part of the story they kind of had a conclusion to the story already um, but they left it open and hanging and now so we continue so there are gonna be three of these patches This is the first one the next one is um, Three months from now another 90 days away And then the next one's another 90 days after that of those three patches. I believe so I'm completely blind on this as well for secrets of the obscure itself I'd already played it. I don't know whether the playthrough suffered for that or not I, mean, I had a comment either side of it for this one. I'm doing it blind I have absolutely no idea what's going on. I have no idea how long it is, but I'm very curious. I have no idea what, what the quality is like, but I'm very curious because obviously it's kind of like a new format. This is the new iteration of Living World. How many times have I said that before? I've said that in Season 2. I've said that on Season 3. <laughs> i said that in Season 4. I said that for the Icebrood Saga. I said that for the Giala Delve patch. And I'm saying it again now. So, uh, yeah. Um, uh, the story itself kind of had a conclusion, but <clears throat> now continues. And this is the one where we get a whole new map. The other two patches, the one in 90 days, the one in 180 days, they expand the map, like Dry Top style, like Drizzlewood style, like Yala style, I suppose. Uh, though that last one probably isn't the greatest example for people that, to get people excited. So I, I would assume the bulk of the map is now, but that might be wrong. I mean, the bulk of Dry Top wasn't right at the start, was it? The bulk of Drizzlewood certainly wasn't the stuff. Drizzlewood was a pretty good expansion in terms of like... It, oh, also Biora. Biora did the expansion as well. The map expansion. And both of those in the Ice Brood Saga, they felt... Um, <clears throat> they felt like really meaty new chunks of content to play, I guess. I mean, it's kind of arbitrary, guys, right? Like, if we actually... If we go in-game... I'm going to come back to character select in a second because there's some special surprises with the, um, the patch notes for this video. <clears throat> But uh, it's kind of arbitrary, I do just want to say, in as much as we get through this enormous lo uh, line dutch loading screen, which is different, and I just got a bunch of dings. Well, what are these? Oh, relics, yeah, we'll talk about those in a second. Yeah, like, if if this had just been the boundary of Biora, uh, this could have technically been a second map, right? Like, this is a thing that's been going on for a long time with Guild Wars. It's kind of hard to articulate. But where you find a loading screen or an invisible wall that you can't pass, that's really the only thing that matters here. The meta on this side isn't really connected to the meta on this side. There are some shared things in common. You know, there's not necessarily travel between the two. And they basically did erect, erect a giant wall there. Drizzlewood was far more integrated. <clears throat> And there is, like, a travel side of it. But to me, th these are not really major things. And I actually kind of wonder, if they had pack it, if, the, if they just said this is a separate map and this is a separate map, would it really have meant that much different? No. Um, would it have got people more excited about the releases? Would we be talking about them in hindsight as more complete releases? Would we have been respecting the content that's in there differently just because of that arbitrary difference? I think maybe. But, uh, you know, Dry Top, I think, is a really good example of a map that expanded in terms of like its layout because they did it in kind of a really weird way that made it feel i mean they are pretty disconnected sections but i don't know this felt really immersive also silver waste is kind of on there as well for silver waste they just did the whole map and then what they did was they expanded the meta oh i had a very weird pang of nostalgia there do you guys find that nostalgia has different flavors for you 
like based on what you're nostalgic about and where you were at the time of your life. Like you get an actual different feeling. The other day I was in Discord playing that that Pokemon game where you name all the Pokemon that you can from memory. And you know, you see if you can get the whole generation. And I got to thinking about Gen 2 Pokemon and I had the weirdest, like strongest sense of nostalgia, but like it, it had a certain like flavour to it. And I think that's the same for Silver Waves when I think about this, when I think about <clears throat> You're playing the giant jumping puzzle with Matt and stuff. Anyway, so so who knows what they'll do. I, I hope it's not Giala. I, I'm just going to be very honest and very blunt with you guys. I really didn't like this. It was just a corridor up the flank. Um, <clears throat> and it, it, again, it's not necessarily that Giala is, was terrible. I mean, if you just look at this as a bonus, then cool. The thing is, it was the way that Giala was talked about before it came out, the way I think that the community's expectations were set in a certain place, that we were going to have a substantial update, like a whole new layer underneath or something. And then, it, and then it was this, you know. I think this is one of those things where we talk about communication from the studio a lot. I would have much preferred when this happened, if before the patch came out, they were like, look, th this, this is a map expansion, air quotes, but it's not big. It's very small. Just keep, keep, keep it in your pants, you know, for a minute. So, um... <clears throat> I really know, haven't done that with, with the Secrets of the Obscure thing. Uh, so, yeah, it looks like everyone's here, which is interesting. Now, the story... So, there'll be spoilers, story spoilers here for the main expansion, which I assume you guys have played for yourself, or you've seen my series. Um, I've already done the whole expansion story. I then did a post-game series, air quotes. My post-game series was three episodes long so far. And then, right about when Halloween came out, I went on break with it. <clears throat> and uh, Halloween's just ended. I... W the post-game series I will continue to do, um, because all these achievements and things, like, we still have them eyeballed here. I, I can still get these. I can still do them. My plan is to do stuff off-screen where it would be boring, like, just beating events, you know, doing events again. So, uh, and I've already been doing some of that. I'll talk about that in just a second. But, yeah, so we'll do this. We'll do this, this patch's story, however long it is. Hopefully, we get a few episodes out of it. And then, um, and then we'll go back to doing the post-game thing. <clears throat> But yeah, for Halloween, I actually didn't play Guild Wars at all. Uh, for the entirety of Halloween, it was really weird because I remember Halloween coming out, like hearing the news, oh, Halloween and Guild Wars 2, and thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah I definitely am going to get in there and play it. And I think Halloween's like basically the best festival in terms of content variety and so on. And last year's Halloween, I'd missed a few things, like a few purchases. So I was sort of umming and ah whether I'd do it. And then all of a sudden, it was like, oh, yeah, Halloween's ending. And by the way, that's the last day of the Wizard's Vault. And the new patch is coming out. It, it all went down just a couple of hours ago, basically. Everything shifted. Uh, Lion's Arch was fully Halloween just a few hours ago. Um, so, upon realising this, that time had just completely got away from me. Yesterday, I did something kind of ridiculous. I played this game for probably about 13 or 14 hours straight. Yeah. And I know what you're thinking, oh, WP, why didn't you stream it? Look, I don't really do content like that. I don't like just... Because I would have been very low energy just sitting there, just, you know... Yeah. It would have been a lot to do all of that live and constantly having discussions and Q&As and back and forth. But I played it solidly to all in one day, basically. I just spammed through all of Halloween, like the full annual thing. I made every single, like, mini purchase that I could or, um, or weapon skin purchases. Obviously, I missed out on doing the dailies, the festival daily stuff, which is quite a lot of AP. But yeah, I just, I was in the labyrinth forever. In fact, if you look at Liss's inventory here, it is a mess. And the reason it's a mess, one is because of the post-game Secrets of the Obscure, Obscure Story stuff. But um, the other reason it's a mess is because I just did Halloween. Now, if I type trick-or-treat bags, like, I got four stacks of these. Um... Just, just this was just what was required for me to go through the labyrinth and get those achievements. There were some kind of story achievements, by the way, that I probably could have made a video about. I didn't realise at the time. I'm used to the um, like the mini updates, like a random collection here, a random collection there, not really being of much worth. But there was a new one, not this year, last year. I didn't play it last year, and I just beat it yesterday in this huge binge. Where essentially it's like pull up. Oh, this might be even older actually. I'm really going to show how little out of touch I am with the Halloween stuff. But um, it was about how Palawa Joko has appeared in the Mad Realm. I had never done that. I assume it's recent ish. It probably isn't actually now that I think about it. It's probably fucking from like season four or something. But I finally did it for the first time ever. Like if you look at my achievements here, um, see, Courts Duty, this stuff. 
And basically, what you learn is that there's a... That Joko's in the mist, but it's kind of not really Joko. It's like a copy of Joko that the lunatic court has sort of summoned. And it was really interesting. Like, you gather different evidence and you question people. It wasn't... It was not bad. It was kind of not good for streaming, though, as well, because some of the objectives were like, okay, close a hundred doors in the labyrinth. So essentially what that content would have been would have been just me spamming the labyrinth. And again, I, I don't really do that kind of stuff, so I don't know. Anyway, that was something I did. I, I did basically everything that I could in Halloween. I unlocked the new mini. I'll show you guys that real quick. Not novelties. Which is really weird. It's a new raven. It's not more expensive than Oxy Decimus, which is like the big prestige one. But this, it's a, uh, a candy raven that uh, one of you guys pointed out to me yesterday. I, I bought this and didn't even preview it. But yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. I kind of like how you can make candy equivalents of like lots of different creatures here. Look at that thing. So uh, yeah, um, and then there were like a couple of random skins. There was a short bow, a war horn. I assume they might have cool projectiles. I don't really know to be honest. Um, because <clears throat> I didn't actually equip them, I just bought the stuff. But yeah, my minis are finally looking good again now. Uh, well, they're not looking that good. I used to have it that, such that the only minis really I was missing was Guild and the, uh, the PvP ones. The, uh, set, uh, you got to get to a finals of a monthly tournament to unlock these. But yeah, um, I got a bunch of uh, other ones still to do. But this was looking pretty bad. Um, and I've caught up through all the festivals this year. You know, I was really blown away with just how I felt about Guild Wars over this Christmas, um, Halloween, guys. Like, this year I played a lot more Guild Wars than I had in the couple of years before that. Um, I got really into AP again this year. Really into AP. Um, so each festival that's come around, Dragon Bash... SAB, um, not Winter's Day, not, not last Winter's Day, but basically all the festivals this year, I really, you know, grinded down. I did all the dailies on them every time, like trying to get the, the APR up as much as possible and having fun with it, really. You know, and buying the, you know, I've been working through this year getting the plushies as well. And these things are ludicrously expensive. The plush Primo, Zaitan is what I just purchased. We've got Krakatoric there. You know, I was working on all this stuff and... And it was, during all that time, it would have been insane for me to imagine ever not doing Halloween. Because it's like, wow, how could you just miss a whole festival when you're so into it? And then, boom, it just sort of vanished beneath me here. So, I don't know, I think something about Seekers of the Obscure has not captured me. I don't know what it is, necessarily. You know, I've got a friend that goes in and does strikes every day. And I, and I could do that because there's rewards and things that I should be doing. But I don't know, there's just something about it. So, we'll see. Oh, and finally, the thing I did as well in my, uh, in my binge yesterday is uh, there were a couple of Astral Wizards Vault rewards I still hadn't done. Like, do another meta. Like, would you believe this? I didn't... Uh, I've done the metas on these maps, if you guys remember. I, I streamed them. Um, but then the Wizards Vault had an update maybe like 60 days ago where it was like, okay, do, do the meta again. And then this one, it was do the meta again. And that has to have been about 60 days ago. I did not have that done. Genuinely, I'd done these metas like twice ever. So in my binge yesterday, I did those. You know, I just rounded up my astral stuff. Um, and uh, I got a huge amount of it as well, because a lot of it was set up for Halloween. So that brings us to today and today's patch, which um, ha includes a refresh of the vault, which I've not seen. So let's have a look. So I've saved myself 500. Oh, it says less than one hour remaining. Has it not reset yet? Or is this just daily? Actually, do you know what? I'm going to go back because I'm not PvPing anymore. I was PvPing a lot over summer. I haven't PvPed anything for ages now. I'm going to set myself to PvE preferences and see what starts coming up here. Um, so five days for my weekly to reset. And I've seen the do stuff. But the special category... Okay, so we're down to just two options in it again. And I guess what will happen now is over these next... I said 90 days. It's not 90 days, is it? It's like 120 or whatever. Well, 112. I mean, this is day one. 113. So, um, <clears throat> which is a very specific number. Does that does that mean Arena that knows exactly when they're doing it now? The next patch. Uh, I assume they'll just slowly add to this as time goes by, which is a nice format. There's a lot of things that I think are quite weak about this whole rework. It was a rework I was really excited about. It was a rework I really wanted for the game. But this panel, at least, and the way they slowly filter things in, I think is pretty good. So they want us to do the story chapter, Hator's Gate. Hytor's Gate. I'm guessing this is going to be more Greek stuff because we're going to the Demon Realm. This should hopefully be good there. And then uh, unlock all the Sarix weapon skins. Interesting. Now the shop has also updated. So I had bought everything that was like timed exclusive except 
um, an essence of gold. I wonder if that's there. Uh, no, it's not there. Interesting. So I lost an essence of gold from that. But, I mean, that's fine. I lost so many of those during the login reward iteration anyway. That's weird they let me buy these, because I have all of these. I have all the sanctified weapon boxes. Oh my god, I don't have the axe! Ooh, okay, wow. Alright, let's buy that then, so that we can get the axe. Holy shit. Sneaky. I almost missed that. Okay, now I have them all. So are you going to grey out? Yeah, okay, it's greyed out. Nice. There you go, you get the, the ding on screen. Um, so what are our new new rewards? You got the arcane flow, an infusion. Oh, I don't like that. An infusion for only three hundred. Surely that's like a one thousand price thing. Oh man, that's wild. I wonder how. Okay, the reason I say I don't like that is stupid. To be honest, my instinct doors. was to not like it because it just makes everyone look really glowy when infusions are really really easy to access. <laughs> But, you know, we're already beyond the pale as far as that's concerned. So, to be honest, be a pragmatist for a second instead of an idealist. This is this is probably a good reward, actually. <clears throat> and then there's the Sanctified Helm. Which is just like a crown, it seems. Suggests to me that we'll be meeting the royalty of Nios or something in this batch, maybe? Sanctified cape. Oh, is it one of those twin capes? The Tassley capes. I like those. It looks pretty good on this. There's so many backpacks that look good on this is like set up at the moment. There's so many. I have her on the flame ring at the moment, which I, I really like. Oh, dark sancti- Oh, okay. So it's the same skin, just recolored. See, the previous set really didn't look that good anyway to me, to be honest. I like the colors of this one way more. I wonder if there's a story or a theme thing going on here where you've got like the golden stuff and then you've got this stuff. It makes me think of, again, there's this weird trivia about Guild Wars, which is that I, I, that I don't even really know what the source of it is. Probably some obscure as hell like forum comment or, or uh, interview from like 2008 or something. Really old. But um, there's this really weird trivia about Guild Wars, which is that before they settled on the idea of Elder Dragons as the story for Guild Wars 2, they were thinking of doing a story about angels versus demons. That was what the story was going to become about. Maybe that was going to be the post-Utopia story, or maybe that was like blueprint stuff for very, very early Guild Wars 2. I don't know. But anyway, that's like the factoid that floats around. Again, I don't even really know the source. But it makes me think of that, that, you know, we're done with the Elder Dragons now, and we're doing demon-y things right now. So if this is if this set is like the demon set, what's the that an angelic golden stuff we saw before? I, are angels going to be in the story by the end of this? Is the next mini X back going to be about them or some shit? I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, I'll probably buy. Well, I'll definitely buy all of those. We got sanctified leggings, which look <laughs> unbelievably. Oh wait, hold on, no, no, no. There's the feet. I guess that look weird. On a Sarah. Oh, and we get the coat. So basically, we can finish the armor set, right? Because wasn't there some sanctified stuff before? What else is there? So the, the coins are back, cheap. Legendary weapon starter kit is back. And it's different legendaries now. Wasn't the Bifrost in the previous set? So that's cool. I have my one from last month. Um, well, last quarter. Uh, and we got all those laurels that I was buying in the last hour here. Yeah, I mean, I've got, I've got to just open this stuff. Oh, yeah, and the uh, Halloween as well came this. with this, the paper bags. Which I actually really like. I, I think apparently they look weird on Char, but these are cool, man. I'm so happy they finally put these in. I, you know, and that's some of one of those weird things as well, where it's like, I could imagine it'd be very easy for the studio to forget about these. Like, super nerds like me will sit around on videos going, do you guys remember the schoolgirl outfits? Um, but here it is. I mean, I wonder if they'll do the Academy stuff as well. They had like a Hogwarts outfit set at some point as well but then they ended up not doing it and I think the idea was because it looked too modern or something I can't remember but I mean you've got people running around with real life glasses and stuff now I, I, again it's like the infusion argument the the trigger the, the guns have already been fired right so anyway these are cool and I'm glad that they put them in and I think they're fun and whimsical so yeah uh, I do still need to get predator so I think I might get the predator this is the one legendary from Gen 1 I don't have. So, yeah. And that looks like it, actually. 
Two more essences of gold. So very similar to last time in terms of just general offerings. But there you have it. By the way, why is reset so late in the day now? This that. Oh no, no, it's not. It's just because the clock's changed. It's just because the clock's changed. Okay. Also, I'm getting resets confused with my my different games. Um, you know, because all games have different reset times. For Final Fantasy, I think it's like four o'clock or something in the afternoon for UK. Um, today, speaking about other ga games, today is a big day in gaming. There's like a lot of games that have big patches and updates. I think something's happening with WoW today. I think something's happening with Genshin today. I have a friend that told me like four games that are all getting... He was like, oh, I'm really excited for Tuesday. And then he listed out like four games that are getting big patches. And Guild Wars 2 wasn't on the list. And I was like, oh, what about Guild Wars? He said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said, maybe I'll watch the Strike CM, which to me sounds like <laughs> a horrendous way of spending the day. But that's something as well. Um, uh, the first CM, the... the the observatory. I don't think we'll necessarily play that today. Okay, so, uh, yeah, that's kind of an overview of what's going on. I want to show you guys the patch notes here as well because there is something really cool, and I've already seen you guys in the live chat talking about that, uh, that I, I, I think you guys will really appreciate here. So, um, why is that not working? It was working a minute ago. Uh. I mean, like two minutes ago you were working, dude, and now you've decided to not work as soon as I go live. Oh, I know why it's not working. There we go. <laughs> it was just because I had Guild Wars on top of it. <laughs> um, professional guys. All right, so check it out. So we got uh, patch notes here. Man, the mask was working as well before. Ah, uh, whatever, whatever. You're going to get a bit of an ugly mask. So, yeah, here's what they say. Um, well, we'll do the late, late notes later. Through the veil, Ceres of House Nephus is defeated. Isgarin is rescued. So here, here come the spoiler, oh, spoilers, obviously. I hope there's a lot of Isgarin in this uh, episode. Tyria has been greeted by a temporary peace. However, the denizens of Naos haven't had the same luxury. Lady Pather has finally beckoned the Wayfinder to join her across the mists in the Demon Realm. The march against Eparch begins now as the Midnight King. That makes me think of um, the whole True Detective, the Yellow King thing. Uh, which I believe exists outside of True Detective as well, funnily enough. Like, it's an actual just normal mythology thing, which is really obscure and weird. Uh, hides away in his palace of blood and fear. The Wayfinder, but his palace of blood and fear. The Wayfinder must travel through the outskirts of an unfamiliar world to collect their allies and carve a path forwards. Only when Hator's gate has fallen can they march onwards. I like this. Is this like a mission or something? Some place? This is uh, one of the things that really captured me as a, like a teen playing Guild Wars 1 was like all the missions that had gate in their name. I don't know why. But, you know, I like that there was the Frost Gate, and then there was, uh, what was it, Abaddon's Gate, and then when you, f and then at the end of Nightfall, there were, there were loads of gates. There was the Gate of Madness, and, you know, the Gate of Fear, and, oh wait, or was it the Domain of Fear? Whatever, there were a lot of gates, right? So yeah, uh, anyway, new story, Secrets of the Obscure continues with three new chapters. Oh, okay, so we get a sense of... So they say three chapters, so let's real quick okay because this is the big question all right on everyone's mind how meaty is this basically the answer to this it has to be this is really good and really fun exciting because what that means is people keep guild wars installed they keep thinking about guild wars and they keep talking about guild wars even between the mini x packs all right that's that's the objective here okay because you can pretty much uh, ho hopefully this is true. You can pretty much s say that, you know, people who know this game, they'll pay attention the next mini X back announcement, hopefully. Unless they were burned by Secrets of the Obscure, I mean. I've said this a few times, we kind of need to see how the second mini X back goes to really get a sense of everything. Anyway, anyway, we want this to be a good thing. So, three chapters. See, it's, it's tricky though, isn't it? There's always been something weird going on with a story journal, right? Which is that... In... Let's take a major release. Okay, let's take Heart of Thorns. Okay. Heart of Thorns ostensibly has 16 chapters, right? 
So it has the prologue chapter, and then it has Torn for the Sky, and then establishing a foothold, and so on and so on. But the thing is, Torn for the Sky, this is a chapter, in air quotes, but what it really is, is one instance, okay? This is not actually equivalent to a single chapter in, say, Living World. No, let's pick the same areas, Living World Season 3. Chapter 1... Sorry, Chapter 2 from Heart of Thorns, Torn from the Sky, is a single instance. Chapter 2 from Living World Season 3 is a bunch of instances, a whole new world uh, world map to go to. Fucking tons of rewards, blah, 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 blah. A Living World chapter is not equivalent to a major release chapter, okay? So the word chapter doesn't actually really mean anything, all right? As far as we are going into this. So now we go to this the, the, the patch notes here and it says three new chapters. What kind of chapters are we talking about here? Are we talking about <laughs> three living world style chapters? I.e. three fucking major releases? I don't think we are, guys. All right. Are we talking about major release chapters? I think that is what we're talking about. And so then how do we feel about that? How does three chapters equates to an old living world release okay well if we just count the ticks i'm currently in daybreak by the way because that's kind of weird because i went there to kill palawa joko minions for my um awakened basically for my uh halloween thing one of the objectives was to do that and you can get like a hundred of them in the farina the first city and any excuse to go to farina i fucking love that place i talk about it all the time so if we count the ticks right and we say that this is a this is a, a major release chapter we got one tick Two, three, four, five, six. There were six in Daybreak. One, two, three, four, five. Five in a bug in the system. One, two, three, four. Well, see, these don't count. See, it's, it's kind of hard to quantify, but we got four or five there. One, two, three, four, five. Five. Each of these probably had an instance with it, right? Or at least a lot of open worlds tracking around. And that does count. Like, it, see, some of these secretly obscure things were just wandering around the open world. So, I don't know. I read three there. I, I, w I would rather have read four or five there so that we're equivalent to living world. I mean, is that wrong of me? What do you guys think? I, I finally actually acknowledge chat here. Hello, everyone. What do you guys think? Does this need to be the scope of living world or is it okay that it's smaller than the scope of living world because we paid let uh, uh, but what did we pay oh it's so com it's so confusing i think the fact it's complicated and confusing to to judge from a value standpoint is probably good for arena net because <laughs> it makes people not really do it but it seems to me that that three might be a little on the low side that's my gut. I mean, we'll play it in a second. This is all going to seem totally stupid, extra rambling. But at the end of the day, guys, content. Things to talk about. <clears throat> Maybe Icebreed Saga is an interesting thing to look at here as well. In terms of, like, what each release gave. What might be interesting as well is Giala. What, 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 what would we technically say that Giala was? Um, no, that's the interlude. What lies within and deep research. It was oh no, it was all three of these, wasn't it? Actually, one, two, three, four. That was actually three, wasn't it? And then one, two, three, four. I don't know. No, I don't think we can quantify it on paper. I think we have to play it and get a sense of it. <laughs> Sorry, the first message I read there is just update his ass. <laughs> all right, lovely. There's some good critique there. Nice discussion going on. How long were the personal story chapters again? Well, I don't know what value there is. It's a, it's a good question, but I don't know what value there is in going all the way back to the personal story because, you know, first of all, one to uh, four in... Sorry, one to six in the personal story is very different. This may as well be in its own section, okay? Because this is branching. There are multiple instances... These back two, Forming the Pact and Victory of Death, they're pretty linear. There are a couple of branches, but they're very linear compared to this. It's kind of a pyramid structure, right? Where at the bottom of the pyramid, you've got fucking tons of choices, all the races, all the backgrounds and so on, and it all comes together. These bottom two are very linear, but they're also incredibly long. These bottom two feel quite like a Guild Wars 1 campaign did. You know, it's a very... You know, it takes ages to do Forming the Pact. 
And as I scroll through it here, Forging the Pact, it, it looks like almost nothing. But I mean, this is funny here because this, this wet work, yeah, every tick here is definitely an instance, for sure. It doesn't look like much, but forming the pack takes a long time, and the victory of death takes a long time. If you watch my old runs, where, you know, I'll do some kind of challenge run of the personal story, I would get to Claw Island fairly quick, and then it would be, like, hours to get through the back to. So, you know, there's no... There's... there's it's kind of... I don't think you can cast a wide... Paint with a, a broad brush on this. Cast a wide net. All right. Yeah, so the unfortunate thing here is I did my binge yesterday and I went to sleep after playing all this game all day. And uh, so I've woken up a couple of hours after the patch came out and people have already played it. So people already have their review. I'm going to try to not get too spoiled. I I'm not that antsy about spoilers, but at the same time, I, the show might be more entertaining if I don't know too much. So, All right, so back to the patch notes. Let's actually uh, get into the specifics because there's some stuff outside of the release that's just cool here. Um... So three chapters. Let's see what those are like. <laughs> Should I do one episode a day <laughs> on a chapter? That way you at least get me for three days. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, guy. I'm really sorry. Um, explore the new release, newly released in Anios, which I'm very excited to do. New mastery line, of course. So master new skills with the inner Anios mastery track. I actually have no idea what that is, and the patch notes don't even. Hint it. Convergences, that's squad based rifts with legendary enemies. Uh, the Cosmic Observatory CM, we can definitely do a day on that. Uh, the Wizard's Vault's been refreshed, I already showed you guys that bit, so there you go. New rewards, there's the new on on Oniros spun armor. So, obviously, a lot of this is building up to the legendary armor. Uh, I think that's the next patch, has a lot of the really big and captivating gameplay stuff. Uh, I'm looking up now, it's weird. When I start recording, I start looking at things that I don't normally, and I'm noticing that my plants, some of the leaves are going yellow. And I don't think it's the season, I think it's that I haven't watered them for a few too many days. Okay, rift hunting, the rotation for rift hunting has been expanded. I, I, this really has not captured me from this expansion, the rift hunting thing. Uh, improvements, new Q QOL improvements have been impl implemented. I wonder what that means. Why is that in the release highlights section? But speaking of specific improvements, check this out. This is very cool. I love shit like this. I really do. And it's, it's again, I say this every time, and I'm sorry to be like a broken, you know, uh, stopwatch or whatever the, the phrase is. It makes it feel like they really care about the game and they're going with it long, 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 long term because they're doing interesting, like, little engine things every now, now and then. So I've played some games that do this. The first one that comes to my mind is Total War. Which is, you know, games release a new, like, season or expansion or whatever, and you get a new login screen, you get some new art there, some new music. Guild Wars does the same. In fact, when POF came out, I did a whole video just on a preview of the POF one, which got me so excited with the, you know, the, the, the pyramids there and the sand, and oh my god, what a great time that was to be playing Guild Wars. So, uh, the character selects are cool. The really ancient ones i.e. the one before Heart of Thorns, you know, there's not even really good footage online of, alright? It, it was set outside Lion's Arch, you could do something kind of goofy where if you put some, like, reflective clothes on a character, you could look in the reflection and see a reflection of Lion's Arch and stuff, even on the character select screen. There, there were weird things about it, but that old one, if I wanted to, like, rip that and show that off um, on a video, there aren't even any really good quality videos of it uh, on YouTube. It, it, it really is rough. And we haven't seen it for years and years and years and years and years. Well, check it out. Just like Total War and many other games, an option's been added to allow players to choose which character select background is displayed. The other game I really want that for is... Uh, I've been modding Solaris again this week. I just released a mod a couple of days ago kind of like a, it's a more AI art generation stuff and just taught me more about coding and things and um, in that game if you want to change the character select background you have to like download a whole mod which is so annoying so anyway here's Guild, Guild Wars is doing it and I, I want to see how this works so let's uh, check it out I'm really excited to go back to the Lion's Arch one basically but we'll go in reverse order here so um, so my first instinct when I logged in was that it would be on here like you know, maybe top left here, some or something like that, because um, that would make sense, right? Uh, but they put it in in these options here, so it's it's not graphics, it's general. 
And then it's... I, I just found it before I turned the stream on. Here you go. Character select background. So with the horn of Maguma. And then also it's not in all order, which is kind of disappointing. So the Horde of Maguma before that was Canther. Also, also they've done it by geography, rather than expansion release. Which is interesting. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, obviously. But here we go, Canther. Aha! And it updates for us. And it does the music. Very good. I was wondering if the track would swap instantly or we'd have to wait. No, that's perfect. That's really good. Um, so there you go, and we're all hopefully very familiar with this. This is, you know, let's see if we all get a different kind of nostalgia each time, right, guys? You get a nostalgia for End of Dragons yet? Uh, my God, why why am I so blind here? Here we go. So Cantha, before Cantha was POF. Unfortunately, there was never an Icebridge Saga one. Um, you know, there's that thing I can do, which is a cool update comes in and you find something to nitpick or you're like, oh, they could have gone a bit further. They, you know, never be happy, guys. That's that's the, the, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Always ask for more. Never be happy. Never be satisfied. So my never be satisfied situation here is wouldn't it have been cool if as a bonus treat <laughs> they had put a far shiver peak spot on for the Ice Bridge Saga, which was an error that unfortunately never had it in the end. Uh, but so, yeah, we got quite a big skip from Canther, all the way back to the POF era, so here we go, and I'm going to shut up when this goes on. Let's see the music change here. Hopefully you guys can hear that quite loud. Dun dun dun! Yeah. Man, I remember when I first saw this, I was at the studio, sitting there, I was like, oh my god, what is this shit? And then the doo -doo -doo. this one didn't wasn't very like bombastic at the start, but there you go. Okay, and then before uh, POF we had Heart of Thorns. So this is feeling pretty old here actually. But this one I don't actually like that much. The music was great, don't get me wrong, but the art is kind of indistinct. It's too foggy, too white. Too. I mean, wh why have we got a sphere there? It doesn't feel too much like. I mean, it does. It does feel like we're really high up in the canopy of a jungle. Don't get me wrong, and I suppose that's maybe supposed to be Tarir or something. There, it's just a bit too abstract for me. I think this one. They could have done much better with that. And then finally, Lion's Arch. You guys ready? And I'll probably leave on Lion's Arch here. Oh yeah, and then we get the original music, the OG music. Yeah, this one's not that good either. I can see why Heart of Thorns is what it is because it was emulating the style of this, actually. Where, you know, being a bit more abstract and painterly and conceptual was, was much more of a thing in the early days, I think, probably, with the art direction. Different people there, different ideas. So, of course, what this doesn't do... Man, if this music played every time I loaded into Lion's Arch, I'd be pretty happy with Lion's Arch. What this uh, doesn't do, unfortunately, is it doesn't give us the original... Um, login screen either which is also a weird thought you know you the plaster back there uh but hey we have we have our videos for that oh my god that just reminded me i still haven't uploaded onto wp2 the fucking secrets of the obscure one. Oh my god i gotta do that i'm gonna write a note for myself to do that jesus christ anyway there you go so selectable login screens and uh you know the i think the the, the story underneath this the thing that's really going on is ArenaNet are probably becoming quite acutely aware of the fact that they're doing these fucking things yearly. <laughs> um, you know, they're, they're probably pretty thick into the next one already, and they have, they have their ideas and their concepts and stuff going for the third one. I mean, surely they do. Surely they do. They might even have a, a fairly concrete idea for the fourth one at this point. And you might say, well, that's ridiculous, WP. That's so many years in the future. Is it? Is it ridiculous? We're only talking three and a bit years, right? In the grand scheme of things, I mean, I would want them to be that far ahead as well, you know? Not not that they've got fuck tons done on, you know, number three and four or whatever, but they have those ideas. So, and you know, with that in mind, they're probably thinking, oh, we're going to go through a lot of login screens. We're losing value on these because we're replacing stuff. So let's stop replacing it. Let's do what all these other games do. Let's let people pick. And so there you have it. Mm-mm. <clears throat> And yeah, there's probably been people asking for stuff like that. That's one of those things, guys, where it's like, it's nice 
but I, I would never ask for it in the community. Um, unless I get to the point where I'm just rambling too much or whatever. But like, like in a very specific way, because it, to me it's like, you know, that it doesn't really affect the gameplay, it doesn't really affect the content in a major way. That it doesn't affect new players in a major way either. New players won't care that much about the old screens, nor will they really find it buried away in the menus there. That's really a novelty for veterans. And when I say a novelty, I mean it has a little bit of surface value and that's it. You know, there's nothing wrong with being excited about it. But if, I, if we're in the realm of getting the devs' ears and pressing for changes, I would never advocate for something so superficial. I would rather time be spent on the X, Y, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, um, nonetheless, it's cool. It's cool. It's definitely fun to have it in there. So there you go. So that's the next little thing. Next. Um, what do we have? Okay, we have... Uh, New menus to expand all groups and collapse all groups within the account vault dialogue have been added. The account vault is our bank, right? Oh, that's pretty good. So you can collapse all and expand all in the bank now. Ah, I quite like that. I have 17 tabs. Is that max, really? 17? That seems like such an odd number. I quite like that. Do you know what I would also like? I would like memory on collapsing, okay? So like if 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 I if I don't really want to see bank one, two, or tab one like th this thing here with all my PvP tomes, you know, two thousand level ups or whatever the fuck that is, more than that. Five thousand level ups. I would rather just close that and then when I close my bank and I go back to my bank, it's still closed. That'd be very handy. In fact, two things, a two-sided thing to that. If it was, if it stayed closed, and if I could click a little cog to rename the tab, I could write tomes there. Yeah, and then I know, I don't even have to click it to check the contents. I know. That's my tomes tab. And like my ascended collection, all of these you could just close. And then you would just say ascended collections on all of these, and then you wouldn't look at it. That would be quite nice, I suppose. And, you know, it's weird. Arena don't do a lot of updates like this. You, you know, it's like when you right-click shit in the game now, there's so much stuff that comes up, like, when it's a crafting material. Open, you know, all these came in on a, a recent update. So, yeah, let me deposit some of this stuff. Jesus Christ. I don't know whether I should open my trick-or-treat trick trick bags or, um, sell them. There's obviously the matter of the new Enchanted mi music box. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Alright, so then there's that. That's cool. I actually didn't read that. That's totally new to me before I went live here. Added three new collections for relics. Um, for the relic Secrets of the Obscure Set 1, players can load into Lion's Arch or any Secrets of the Obscure map to retroactively check for progress. That's interesting. Um, that it won't check unless you're in one of those maps. So let's check those out, shall we? They're rare collections, are they? Oh, wow. Man, I was so close. I basically had all my recollections done, and now, and now, <laughs> I'm losing progress again here. So, what have we got here? Relics, core set one. Collect 40 core set one relics. No, relics from the level 80 boost will not count towards progress. Oh, right, okay, I was going to say. See, I kind of did a, a sort of a scumbag thing when Secrets of the Obscure was coming out. They said that every level 80 character... Oh, wait, 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 no, 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 my scumbag thing still works. They said, look, every level 80 character you have already on your account will give you a box for a relic for free. Um, so I just made, so you, I just showed you all those level up tomes. I just filled up, you know, because I got like 40 character slots. I just filled up the ones I wasn't using and put them to level 80 so I could claim the box on them. And then, you know, you can delete the characters again afterwards. So I did that, and I guess I can... Where Where is that? Is it in my bank? Let's have a look here. Uh, relic. Yeah, see, I've got 84 relic chests. See these? That's actually a lot. Hold on. Did they give me, like, three per character or something? Why have I got 84? Anyway, sh I, I can, surely I can just... Ready to make Liss's inventory even worse. Let's take a condition. Relic. And then let's say afflicted, which hopefully isn't on the list. Yeah, okay, cool. So I can just grind through these here. <laughs> nice. So there's 40 for set one. These will be all the vanilla relics. And then um, 
And then set two, these are just from Seekers of the Obscure. So these will actually take more, more effort. Relic of Carco Caracosa, oh my god, the whole Carcosa thing as well, that's Street Detective as well. Heal other nearby allies when you successfully combo with a blast finisher. That's really cool. Yeah, I heard about some of these. This one seems really cool for competitive. If I get back into it, who knows? But Demon Queen, poison you apply reduces healing by even more. And it's 50% healing reduction. That sounds like it could be fucking cool. And then also, if you disable someone, it applies poison. And it's only on a one second ICD. I assume the PvP version is different. I would think it is anyway. Let's have a look here. Demon. I wonder if they sorted out the filtering of this stuff. Sorry, I've got a cup of coffee in front of my uh, keyboard. Yeah, it's still on a one second ICD. And it's still two stacks. That's crazy. I don't know what the additional amount is. Oh, yeah, there you go. 50%. So it'll be 50% reduction instead of 33. So I don't know. That one seems quite interesting. Um. Yeah, uh, so you got set one and set two, and what are these other ones? What's my basic collection? Sarix weapons. We gotta get those, apparently. Consecrated Sarix weapons. Which gives me calcified gasps. Abomination weapons. Ooh, that sounds cool. Also gives me calcified gasps. Let's see here. Wardrobe. A bomb. Oh, weapons. I always made that mistake. ABO. ABO. Abomination sword. Oh, they look like the um, like the second ever Black Lion set, the Cryptus stuff or whatever it's called. Oh, that looks good. I like the longbow. Oh shit! And you got the asymmetry with the eyes. That's pretty cool. I wonder what the projectiles are like. Imagine that on a big char or a big Norn, so it's really obvious and easy to see. Do you guys remember that um, Karka longbow from the uh, champion chest? The champion box is way, way, way back. It's kind of like that vibe, but better. The shield should be exciting. Shortbow has both eyes on the same side. Axe is just a giant eye. Makes sense. Dagger. It's, it's like more Ippo style stuff. The thing is, the weapons underneath that these things are clinging to are not really anything to write home about. Like, there's a pretty generic greatsword. Isn't that like a vigil looking greatsword? Got a mace. I like the pistol. Oh, imagine holding that with the tentacle writhing around in your hand. Rifle. Scepter. Staff. It's interesting to me that some of the, like the staff here and the rifle, you'd expect they'd have two eyes, wouldn't you? Since the bows, two-handed, had two eyes, but no. Focus, they can be really creative with. How would you even hold that? Ooh, that's really cool. It's like you sheath your hand into the slime. It's like a glove, guys. Look at that shit. Hold on, let's look at that wheel now. The thing is, I'm on a Sura. This is the, one of those skins where it's like, that's a really cool concept, but the, like, the fantasy, the idea that I'm actually sliding my hand into that goop, you don't really get, because when I mean, you really have to look at this weapon-only preview and think about the hole there, be any other situation, I mean, unless it's got an amazing equip animation, but we can be sure it doesn't. It's just clicking into this, by the way. I think I've noticed some weird stuff going on with Guild Wars. Did you guys see the Clock Tower this year? The Mad King's Clock Tower? That some of the animations on it are no longer animated, they just... They just click from state A to state B. And like here, shouldn't she actually unsheath it in the preview? I can't remember. Maybe she didn't. Yeah, by the way, that was another thing with Halloween. They had the stopped clock tower. That was like the new update where you could go to the clock tower and it's not moving. Which to me, I really don't like that update. One, it's like, okay, effort was spent on this. Could it have been spent on something else? But two, it's like, I mean, you've kind of betrayed the magic of the clock tower there, haven't you? I'm not usually, well, I don't really care if easy modes exist from a perspective of, like, elitism or whatever. If people want easier things to practice on, if the game needs to be easier for more people to, to enjoy and stuff, I'm fine with that. I think that's all okay. But, like, there is something very specific about the magic of climbing the top clock tower under the time pressure with the panic of everyone else with you and the sense of elation you get at the end of it that I feel like is sort of betrayed by a version where it's just standing there. But I guess, I don't know, what, did a lot of... 
new people come to the game struggle so much with the clock tower that I mean, who who is the audience there? Who's the target? Well, but whatever anyway. So you can do the clock tower um, slowly now, and gliding's enabled on it as well, um, which almost got me killed because I was like, not expecting it. Focus. Sorry, yeah, that's the focus, and this is the no, no, no. That was the torch. Of course, it was the torch. I'm really looking for focus. Warhorn's interesting. Got a little bit of the wobble physics and the shield. Shields are always some of the best skins. Always, always, always. But again, the, the things underneath, not so much to write him about. Um, okay, so that's one set. What's the other sets? Um, that was Abomination Weapons. Sin Eater was from before. Skyscale was from before. So what about the Consecrated Sarix stuff? So, the regular Sarek sword looks like this. Okay, that's fucking awesome. That's like Pathos sword. And then the consecrated one has a shiny effect on it. Oh, and it's differently colored. It's got like a chromatic layer on it. Oh, I prefer the colors of the originals. They've made them shiny on this. It's like the Juggernaut effect. And it's, take, it's made them... Oh, the, the original colors are so much better! Maybe it's only like this in preview. The uh, if the the blood trail effect is fucking cool though. Imagine if you had both. So let's see with a great sword and swing it. See if it's got like a trail. No, it doesn't look like it. What's your reward for beating that though? Oh my god, all these panels. The reward is oh okay yeah just the calcified. So there's not like a, a back piece or anything. And that's it. Okay, so there you go. So that's that. <clears throat> Oh, by the way, another thing that's going on with the game at the moment is there's a big balance preview uh, and, you know, all the excitement about the new weapons and stuff, which will be the next patch, uh, which we can talk about as we go forwards. I, I actually um, think I want to do a thing with boots about that. You know, it's finally something worthwhile to talk about. Um, but, yeah. Um, an option to disable Griffin and Skyscale mounts on ley lines. It's toggled by, by F1 while mounted if the player has the mastery. Yeah, so when this came out, there was a lot of talk about how you could get stuck on the ley lines. And to me, I always just thought, well, just unmount. You know, I, but the thing is, I haven't played it enough to really be in that place where it's like, okay, this has happened to me five times today, I'm fucked off. That's interesting. It's a bit hacky of a solution, but it's a solution. I'm happy to see they've done it. Disabling or re-enabling flying mounts on ley lines persists permanently and is a shared setting for both flying mounts. For example, if you disable it on your Griffin log out, next time you log back in and mount your Griffin or your Skyscale, it will still be disabled until you re-enable re it. That seems like the kind of setting that someone's going to turn off, leave the game for a year, come back and have no clue what's going on, and then you'll start seeing Reddit threads about it. <laughs> just, just a hunch. Um, fix the bugs that cause the avatar of regrets. Okay, and then there's just boring bug fixes, okay? I scanned these before I started. Maybe something on this list really strikes you guys and stands out. Let me know in the live chat. But as far as I can tell, you know, just housekeeping, nice stuff. Wizard's Vault. We already kind of looked at all this, so we don't really have to go through. Um, however, the Wizard's Vault daily completionist chest now gives instant PvP and world versus world track progress. For completed daily and world versus world tasks. It wasn't doing that before, I guess. So there's fishing on the new map. I like that they have a whole fishing section here. It's quite good. And it's a nice way for End of Dragon to continue influencing the game. I like that. They have lower drop rate fish, exclusive to inner knives. We'll see there. Okay, and then finally the patch notes. I mean, this was crazy. What do you guys in the live chat think of this? Or in the comments, of course, as well. There's a dungeon update here. So, dungeons are a weird thing where it's like if they ever touch them, it's like they're telegraphing to the community that... I don't know, what's it telegraphing them? There's going to be dungeon updates, blah, blah, blah. I don't think this is any of that. I don't think this is ArenaNet saying there's going to be new dungeons. I don't think... Well, what I think this is, basically, 
is that dungeons are, for years, the black sheep of the franchise as far as Endgame is concerned. They were really weirdly coded and written um, and a hassle for the devs and they found other formats to push players to instead, like raids and fractals, m mainly. And in fact, we saw around the release of Heart of Thorns, they very specifically shifted rewards out of dungeons and into the new formats to get people out of the dungeons. Kind, It was kind of like the arena net was turning their backs on the, on the dungeons. And then they were in this weird situation where it was like, okay, but if we touch dungeons, we're kind of telegraphing to people that we're going to do stuff with them again. And maybe they don't want to do that because maybe they don't want to do more stuff with dungeons. Um, I think that we've been in that status quo for years, and I think something is... I'm going to use the phrase snapped. I'm sure it's not so severe as all that. But something changed, and they sort of thought, you know what? We support this game, we love this game, we care about this game, it's going to go on for years, and dungeons have just got straight up bugs and issues in them. And whether we like it or not, the dungeons are there. We can't get rid of them without there being an up outcry. New players will go to them, and new players will have bad experiences in them. So, fuck it, let's fix at least some of it. This shouldn't be a black sheep. We're not, we're not, we don't want you in there constantly for your end game rewards and, and so on. But we, we, they are a part of the game and they shouldn't be as buggy as they are. So let's fix some stuff up. I think that's probably what happened. Now, the Extra Life event just ended, and I think, just like last year, they did some Let's Plays and a bunch of commentary, and just like last year, I haven't watched it. That's two years in a row now I haven't seen their Extra Life stuff, which is a shame, because I think there was a big Factions playthrough, people on the Guild Wars 1 subreddit were talking about. So I don't know whether the devs have had like more comments about that, or there's a forum post or something, but that's my guess as to why there's a dungeon update here. It's just, you know, just clean it up a bit. From my perspective, it's really cool to see. I mean, it's not small. Look at this. Every single dungeon has had a bunch of updates like even ancient shit like in crucible of eternity where zodja wasn't wearing like zodja was bald in a cutscene or something is it crucible it's one of them they fixed so she's not bald in that cutscene anymore that's literally like a 2012 bug or maybe it got introduced shortly after 2012 or something but for years uh it's been there they added like a moat in a raw to let you teleport forwards during one of the boss fights it's just, there's real, real good housekeeping and good stuff in here. So, I mean, good on them. From my perspective, my big thing with this game, with as far as dungeons is concerned, I believe that they should make a set of new fractals. Eight new fractals. Totally new fractals. But the idea of these fractals is that they're the dungeons. So it's using... Ask on catacombs like tomb assets and bosses and voice acting. Like, in terms of assets, it's using... Ghost of Ascalon stuff, Ascalon Catacomb stuff, but essentially it's totally new content, built as a fractal with three variations, because fractals sometimes have variations, that represent the explorable paths as they once were. And once those eight fractals are in, I would say they could just delete these. And by making them as new fractals, they avoid having to deal with the old code and stuff. That to me would be really beautiful. And then and then there you go, Guild Wars has got the dungeons, it's just they're in the proper format, they're in, in fractals. I would have loved that for the game. Now, the fact that ArenaNet have done an update like this, where they actually go to the actual original dungeons with the, the wonky code, and they fix up the original dungeons, that says to me that um, that, that fractal idea is a pipe dream. Because you would you would never do this if you're just going to delete all this shit anyway, right? I think anyway. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. So, I mean, it always was a pipe dream, but, you know. And I had similar thoughts about splitting raids into strikes. But, uh, yeah, it's cool to see that they've done that. There's the late notes as well. I mean, I'm not going to read each individual one. I don't think there's any he hidden bombshells in there, by the way. If you guys see something absolutely insanely cool, let me know, but I don't think there are. Oh, and the other little thing I'll note on the dungeon thing is, yes, at, at Heart of Thorns, they shifted the economy away from dungeons, but there was an outcry, and people always get really hung up on that. But there was an outcry at the time, but what people don't like to talk about is that, like, six months later, like, around the Ember Bay patch, somewhere around there, Lake Doric, maybe, they put all the money back into dungeons. They put that weekly thing, uh, not weekly thing in, the, uh, you know, oh, I'm in game, I can show it to you. They put this achievement in where you do like eight unique paths. This one, Dungeon Frequenter. 
And every time you do eight unique paths, you get five gold and you get a bunch of currency, you know. They did shift the economy back in, but people always like to forget that. So, you know, this idea that dungeons are the black sheep, they kind of are, but there have been times, like this patch, like the, the, the patch that added this achievement, where, you know, it's not quite felt like that. But anyway, there you go. I like seeing dungeon updates. Um, who knows what they've got in mind. I do think Guild Wars misses out for... I think Guild Wars was so ridiculously over-engineered sometimes that it re they really shot themselves in the foot. I think, ultimately, Fractals didn't need to exist. They could have just kept doing dungeons, but... But better than Twilight Arbor Aetherpath, which is what put them off of dungeons, but what put the put, what put the community off of dungeons and caused that to not be received well was not that it's a dungeon, was that again it was over-engineered and it was too difficult for the skill level that people were being expected of and so on, you know. Certain things needed to be iterated on, but whatever. Whatever. It's amazing as well, because Fractals came in and with all the controversy of the ascended items thing as well, because they were never gonna start creep, blah 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 blah. All of that, that happened so fucking fast after launch. Just a couple of months after launch, and they shot themselves in the foot so bad with the fractals. Anyway, that's kind of a whole different story. Okay, and then late notes. Uh, fix the bug with a respawn checkpoint. Stalker's strike. Okay, and just some minor uh, uh, range of stuff. It's interesting because they were actually already pre-nerfing some of this untamed stuff um, before even the big patch, right around when I quit. I'm not PvPing anymore because it's far too stagnant and the, the warrior stuff just really aggravated me. Um, and I'm just super bored of the matter. Super bored and they're not really... And I can't believe I'm going to say this. I wish they would take more of a blizzard approach where they shake things up more and just specifically shift things. Because, uh, yeah, I just wasn't too into it. Anyway, there you go. So that's the patch notes. And I know what some of you guys are thinking, WP, why don't you just do a patch notes video? It's because it, a patch notes video wouldn't have been as freeform as this. I wouldn't have been able to ramble about all that other shit, you know. So there you go. <laughs> That's an hour, though, on, on, on the patch. Uh, and now we can get in. We can actually play the goddamn thing. So let's see what we've got. And the music ends just at the right time. Secrets of the Obscure. Duress. So let's just remind ourselves, oh no, I don't think I should read all of this. We've waited long enough, haven't we? But let's read this bottom thing here. Before I was pulled into the rift in Gendaran Fields, I questioned what came- wait, no, 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 is that right? With the Elder Dragons dead and Aurene settling into a new role, I- no, 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 this is end- Huh? With the discovery of the Astral Ward, I realised that there's a whole side of Tyria that I didn't know about, that nobody knows about. And with the arrival of the Cryptus, we may be seeing new threats from the Mist emerge in their place more frequently. Tyria needs to act. We are, we've a reprieve from the onslaught of the Elder Dragons, and there have been no signs of any rogue gods. We need to rebuild and heal. With the Cryptus being pushed back into Nios, we've got time to figure things out. For now, at least. I just hope that Isgarin chooses to inform the rest of the world of this darker threat before the hour is too late. Paith has suggested I do the rounds and meet with my allies. Enjoy a moment just to breathe, because as soon as she's ready, we're headed to Nios. Here we go. The Wayfinder is called Back Into Action by Paither and the Wizard's Court. Have you missed me? Ooh, I have. Paither. The situation in Nios darkens. Abarch's atrocities only escalate. Your gravitas is necessary. My gravitas. I'll meet you at the tower. But don't rush. Ms. Garin's delights in my company. I'd better hurry. Okay. Um, WP trying to stretch every last bit out of this update. <laughs> yeah, you're goddamn right. <laughs> I did that for Secrets of the Obscure as well. <laughs> I mean, it's fun, isn't it? It's fun. It's a chance to hang out, spend time together. Tower Courtyard. <clears throat> you still here as a quaggin because of me, WP? I know, I feel bad, but look, that was my observation. I can't help it. No, actually, to be honest, the quaggin thing is not what I said, I think. I, I pointed out that my friend thought the dragon void at the end of End of Dragons sounded like a quaggin, and he actually quit over it. But, um... Well, he didn't quit. He didn't beat the story until, like, a year later, where I sat down and did it with him. But, uh... Paither just speaks a little bit slow. That's all it is. Okay, Duress. Man, are we going straight to the map? 
It's interesting to me that all the the icons for the guildies are to the left. Because, well, a lot of people logged off throughout the, the duration of this. Because that, because like, where would you put the map, right? Would it be on another layer? You know, the mists layer? Would it be on the the, the, the mist map that appears when you're in the edge of the mist, the heart of the mist? Oh, sorry, world versus world or the heart of the mist? Edge of the mist too, I guess. But yeah. Hello, Road. Fred. How's the Astro Ward? Recovering. Still got the odd cryptus or two coming in from Nios. Nothing we can solve with a hammer to the skull. That's good to hear. These past few months, I've been recovering in my own way. It's still a shock, knowing what I do. Uh, Isgarin and Paitha are waiting for you. Follow me. They're... getting along, at least. <clears throat> oh? Consider me... curious. And anxious. They're getting along, dot dot dot. Well, I want a lot of Isgaran from the story, so it's pretty good that like the fourth goddamn line is Isgaran already. They're here. Good. Her presence is not kind to one's sense of inner calm. Darling of you, Garen. So this is what you meant by getting along. Paitha informs us that the situation in Nios is escalating. I didn't intend to join that fight, but... Better to stop a growing threat than ignore it. I have been seeing a spike in rift attacks here too. Four in the Shiver Peaks yesterday, one in Krita this morning. At last our thoughts are in unison. Any help we receive, I will use. I worry about overwhelming the cryptus with visitors <clears throat> too quickly. But the Wayfinder, maybe. And a few strong-stomached allies. Strong-stomached? We've been pushed to the outer reaches of Nios. Into Norris's power. The beast that attacked us. Oh yeah, spine. that's the meta boss. It's weaker now. Thanks to your efforts. But it has risen the stakes. It oh, there's like a Norris too, is there? Is the meta event Norris again? Post right on the edge of the abyss. Norris nor Epoch have been able to see it through the fog. The Wayfinder joins me first. We acclimate the Cryptus. And then we bring more. She loves to assume my benevolence. Doesn't sound like we have much time to prepare. We do not. Hopefully we can call on the wizard's aid soon <laughs> as well. We've incursions to quell interior before I can send any meaningful numbers. But I can't be convinced. Wayfinder, can we speak for a moment, just you and I? Don't let me ruffle your sumptuous garb, Isgar. Talk. I'll be near. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Is there if any privacy her, really from her? I might not be able to help you. You'll be on your own. That's yes, okay. You didn't help me throughout the main are story. There terrors in the demon <clears throat> realm. It's a very different world than ours. Mabon knew more than Ooh, I. Ooh, because it was their homeland? I made Pitha a promise, and I plan on keeping it. Then you've already chosen. I have. This is about Tyria. We barely escaped the dragon cycle. We don't need another oppressor. I'll light a portal, if that's what you want. But before we return to within earshot of others, there's one other piece of intel that requires discretion. Okay. Paitha has secured our missing astral ward in Nios. Those who were lost when you first traveled to their realm of rot. Oh, okay. You mean Arena? Frode's daughter? Does he know? She lives, according to Paitha. Oh, it's like a Cormier situation. Not permitted Frode to join them until we've established an operational mist's gate. Keep them safe. And if you've any other questions, <clears throat> now is the time. Whoa, it just occurred to me, if Krologan is a thing, if Fallen Divinity's Reach is a thing, I can tell you that it's not a thing because I would have woken up. I've woken up. I've read a few messages from you guys today. On like general vibe and gist of the patch and none of them have gone oh my god wp krologan so i'm pretty sure Krologan is not in it 
<laughs> um, yeah, can I just say, through the main story, Paythor was just in our head able to observe what we observe and eavesdrop, right? Just because she has a physical form over there now, did, did she lose that power? She could, in theory, listen and eavesdrop in on anything, right? More questions? Yeah, sure. When will you send more aid? You seem hesitant to send aid. Subtle, am I? Until I see our dear Paythor in action, I'm still unsure if this whole ordeal will be worth it. I'm not certain the ward would want to go either. They joined to protect Tyria, not crawl through the depths of Nias. But that is protecting Tyria. But some are admittedly eager for Cryptus Blunder. They lost their friends, their allies, and they trust you. Paythor? Hmm, perhaps not. They linger on the line of curiosity and fear, as do I. But they trust their wayfinder. <clears throat> I will be allowing volunteers to cross through as soon as we establish a gateway between here and Paythor's outpost. Just do keep the ward in Nia secure while we connect those threads. I'll do my part. It's kind of an interesting thing where this organization has spent so long protecting Tyria from the, the, the mists and external threats. But the idea of taking the fight back to them has never, ever been on the table. You know, like, that's a pretty obvious thing to do, you know. Take the fight to them as it, to get off the back foot. A good off a good def the best defense is always a good offense, right? But he's, he's drawing that line in the sand. I oh, know that's interesting. Yeah, Mabon. Uh, there's also something here as well, which is like, okay, Mabon and his Garin hung out for how many hundreds of years, and didn't reveal to each other what they knew about these otherworldly threats that threatened them. Like that conversation never happened. His Garin never took the time to hear what Mabon knew. You know, that wasn't of any interest or import, given the war that they're in. <laughs> uh, well, did I already? Ask, did I, is this different? Do I trust Pather? No, it's different. The better question is, do you? I do. With an ounce of hesitance, I hope. She lingered in your mind for so long. Do you know the detriment she could have inflicted? And yet she didn't. If anything, she saved me multiple times. Does that not demonstrate the severity of the situation? I suppose it does. <laughs> Yeah, but this could just be like a... if you need to be. It would not be a kind place to die in. They're really building it up as an atmospheric, scary place, right? I'm really excited to see this place. I was very excited about it in the, the original playthrough, you know, just the little glimpses we had at the start and at the end. Is he going to start speaking as soon as he stops? Because I want to ramble about... The, what the arena net should do, right, is they should do the Halo thing, the Halo 3 thing, Wait, the Grave Mind thing. Hello allies for a brief moment and then as soon as that's over it's like okay i'm gonna go back to consuming now and i, th I feel like that's what paytha could do it'd be really cool to have a bunch of allied demons the enemy of my enemy is my friend you deal with that and then boom they 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 bare their teeth again i loved that moment in halo so much but probably just for the novelty of having like some new allies but that's what the original the bungee trilogy was so good at you know like you're fighting against the covenant for ages and then all of a sudden you're playing as the arbiter and you've got fucking hunters as allies and going? stuff Oh, hello. I don't know how many realms of existence rest between us and Nios. Trying to maintain a connection is proving a challenge. I've got faith in you. Once we make that connection, travel between Nios and Tyria will be much less taxing on the wizards. Oh, cool. Um, so I assume the gate that was under construction, this will be done. Oh, and that might make sense why the map's over there. Hold on. There's not about to be some story where this actually warps into Tyria like their fractal project, is it? I like that little line there about how there could be a bunch of realities between here and Nios. Like, that's really good and I think really important for ArenaNet to continue demonstrating that there's lots of things to be excited about. There's lots of stuff going on. It feels really weird and underwhelming that Zodge is in the instance, but I don't get to interact with her in any way. No voice acting, no pressing F, nothing. I mean, it's nice that she's there anyway, I guess. The model. Does she, I hope she has stuff to do in this patch. Surely she does. Surely we're going to learn more about her ascension. 
which I can now openly talk about, which is nice. I like the, the stone capper. Good way to get a good look at the details on them. Is there anything else for me to eavesdrop on? So hold on, hold on. What's going on with story journal achievements here? Through the veil. Oh, there's not many. I can't scroll. Okay. Act 4. That's interesting. They refer to it as Secrets of the Obscure Act 4, but it's not titled that way there. Okay. Are we ready to depart? I think so. I'm with you, Pather. My strength is returning, but slowly. This will take a few moments. While you two prepare, Wayfinder, with me? Oh, is he going to ask about this Someone secret? Would like to speak with you. Oh no. She might be a little. Oh, she went through. Oh, it's Zodja. She, she didn't speak to us because she doesn't even recognize she's us. She's been taking some time to herself, mostly, adjusting. Oh, this would be really cool if she's like a fucking blank slate. A bit fuzzy. Memories of the ward came back. But before that, she knows your name. Oh, okay. It might take her a moment to connect it to a face. Oh. I... Okay. I'm ready to see her. Oh, I take back my little criticism there. That's actually really cool that she didn't say anything to us. I mean, maybe you can ask why the commander has no initiative to speak to her. But still, this is cool. I th th there could be very cool stories telling her. I want her to be like really weirdly like empty towards us. I don't think that's what's going to happen. But I kind of want her to be almost like like a blank slate. Zoja. You have a visitor. Ear deep in documentation about the obscure. Laban's notes are extensive. Hey, Zosha. Uh -huh. Or a bitch to us. What well, if she's a bitch to us? That'd be so good as well. Yes. Yes, of course. Hello. Well, she she uh, goes back to being a characteristic you. Asura. See me when you're ready. I'm sorry. I a uh, little overwhelmed. I, I didn't realize you were coming today. Paitha and I are about to head into Nios. Paitha? Paitha? Oh, the the giant cryptus lady. I like her, I think. Isgaran finds her annoying. Wait, you're going with her? Yeah, I am. Pretty nervous about it, to be honest. Okay, be safe. I've been a few times helping seal rifts. It is... it's something. I will. Thanks, Zoja. Oh, that wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. Sorry. I... This must be a bit awkward for you. I... I'm trying so hard to re... Hey, don't worry about it. One step at a time, right? Yeah. Dagda keeps telling me that, too. All these characters... Say, Commander. No. No, uh, Wayfinder. Are you a commander? Oh, that's... I was. This is good. Okay, there was a little bit of it there. A little bit, a little bit. But I'll tell you the problem with Guild Wars, all right? I'll tell you the problem. The problem is the commander is too emotionally mature. Everyone's too emotionally mature. Everyone's too decent to each other. Everyone, like, knows the score too well. <laughs> you know, I when I was playing that Daybreak thing for the Killing the Awakened, and Bram, like, loads in on that instance, he's like, oh, what a surprise, you're here. I was like, do you know what? People fucking hated Bram and stuff at that time. But I was like, this is really good storytelling. I like that there was some, you know, people kind of don't like to feel bad or annoyed or angry while they're playing the story. I get it. But, you know, there is good storytelling in making people un uncomfortable and riling them up. And we had a lot of that with the whole Bram versus the commander thing. I really liked that. And it felt like really refreshing, even just to see a little moment of that before. But yeah, I guess the commander's obviously going to give her space and talk to her very softly like you would a child and blah, 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 and it's going to be fine. But yeah, um, uh, I really just wanted to get some, something really fucking like almost gross and unsettling there where she's like, who, who are you? Like to a, a, a much more major degree. Yeah, as someone just said in the live chat as well, we didn't see the ascension process happen. So th that's either because we're supposed to be suspicious of the whole thing and think it's dodgy. Or they didn't have the budget or the time to put in the scope of the patch. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, where, where, where do we want to go with that? Um, also, so far, all of the framing of the whole Ascension thing in this storyline 
has been like we're not meant to question it. I feel like I don't know whether you guys. I know in my series, I talked. We we talked about it a lot. We went. We said, oh, this seems dodgy. This seems weird. Like, isn't this brainwashing? Washing? Isn't this a form of indo indoctrination? Aren't they practicing? similar things to what the demons are doing, blah, 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 blah. Does it matter if the pre-ascended person consent? All that kind of shit, right? We, we talked about that a lot. But I feel like the game never talked about that. I feel like the idea that the Astral Ward are doing something kind of scummy and weird, the game hasn't really opened that door. It's presented facts to us, which we can look at and say, okay, that's kind of fucked up. But I don't know whether they really want us to be in that headspace. Same with the fractal project thing. And we're talking about, like, wow, what? They put real people into these fractals? Like, what, what, what's going... Like, there's fucked up stuff there, but Guild Wars doesn't seem to have that attitude. And it's either because they don't have that attitude, or it's because they're trying to bury it real deep for, like, the twist where where suddenly the Last Reward are doing the bad thing or, or whatever. I don't know. But I feel like ArenaNet are pretty... They wear their, thing, their, their, their ideas on their sleeve pretty clearly. You know, they're not very subtle. They sh and to be honest, they shouldn't be. It's an MMO. A lot of people play it. Um, you know, and it's not... You know, it needs to be easy to interpret. So when you look at people doing dodgy things... It's pretty clear that they're, you're supposed to think they're dodgy doing dodgy things, like the Order of Shadows, right? If you look at the Path of Fire story about the Order of Shadows and the, the documents that you, like the voice actor documents that you get to listen to, like it's pretty clear, okay, this is a shady organization with some pros and some cons. The, the, the Astral Ward really isn't being framed that way at all, so I don't know whether it's a conversation worth us having. But I like the conversation, obviously. It's interesting. This is a, speaking of chisel wood, they use this chisel wood map a lot. Alright. <clears throat> Find your friends. Poor Zodja. Like, that could have been a real gut punch, right. that scene. How'd it go? Good, I think. She seems like she's doing well. I wish she... I'm just glad she found her home. <sighs> That was harder than I thought it would be. I know it hurts, but keep your bond close. She'll see through the fog if you shine that light bright enough. Are you ready? Wayfinder? Warden! Curator! Crypt is in the courtyard! A rift is open! Within the bounds of the wizard's tower? With the speed of a storm, go! Eucalyptus? Inside the we tower? We stick together and remain calm. Here? <clears throat> yeah, so wait, what? Now. Didn't we established defenses to this, wasn't it all locked and sealed away properly? Such that they couldn't do that. Let's see what gameplay they have for us right now, just same as the uh, the main patch. My build right now is celestial. Uh, a ripple in the earth. with air attunement and super speed on toggling into air a swift um, and the reason for that was when I was in the labyrinth I found this was a good way of keeping up with people because you, you basically have permanent super speed which feels real good also there's a thing about tagging which is like if you give people boons you tag much better and Catalyst is, you know, dropping the fields, very good for tagging. And then the boon pulses is also really good. Is different. It's stronger than even I'm familiar. Try sealing it with the heart, Wayfinder. Way ahead of you. Yeah, way ahead of you. I hadn't thought of that at all. Okay. Wait, hold on. That's just scan for rift. Oh, you just want me to press it? It's not working. Then we try from the other side. Peter, you leave, we will follow. Sorry, Take what? Oh, okay. Lush, air. And go. Oh, I'm really excited about this. Here we go. <gasps> go loading screen. What is this place? N Nios? Okay, I have to breathe. <sighs> Actually, I probably could have gone a lot longer, but you know. I can't just sit here silently. Wow, this is quite interesting, isn't it? They look like giant trees. Yeah, I don't have first-person cam enabled, so I guess. Oh, man. Seems very goopy. 
It's not as red as I thought it was. It's much more pink and miasmic. Wow, I've got to hit that. I've got to hit, hit M and see what's going on here. Okay, so it is its own map on its own layer or whatever. It's just that people get printed on the world map in the other direction. And I guess the point for that is, um, you know, we see that happens already. Like when people are in, say, the, the fractal lobby, you know, they appear underneath Claw Island, even though they're not technically there. You, was a f you were pleasantly surprised. You thought it would be all red and viney. What's wrong with the red and viney? I mean, you mean like the uh, the Saris attack room from the previous, from the, the the main expansion release? I think that looked all fine. I guess the idea is I glide or mount down there. Of course, we still don't actually have the uh, the Naos, the Demon Sky Scale from that achievement, but all stuff for the post game series. Was oh, that a bouncing mushroom? Nice. Is it a different kind of bouncing mushroom? I think it is. Oh, awesome! It's all like gross and dark. And right. What's going on with the music here, though? This it's just oddly silent, and very quiet. Okay, this doesn't actually work. I think they didn't want me on it yet. I think we're just supposed to rush down here. Valley of the Damned. Nice. The Twisted Cathedral and the Valley of the Damned. Holy shit! Welcome back to Nios. This is very Realm of Torment. -y. It looks so different. Acclimate yourselves. This isn't Abog's territory, but we're exposed. No time. It looks like the welcoming committee is right on schedule. Get ready, everyone. I haven't seen this realm of existence in... Fight, Iskaran. Focus. Oh, he's... I intend to. He's been here before. The heart of the Obscure should allow you to extract demonic essence from the cryptus you slay. The rifts will only respond to their particular flavor of magic, so we'll need to gather enough to complete the spell. I'm on it. You're on Part of a volcano. Rushing out against you. Is this what millennia of appetence have distilled into? You see it now. A ripple in the earth. You feel it. We need to take more of them down. And the bigger the cryptus, the more the essence. Though appetence. I don't know that, that word. It degrades pretty fast. Bring it back to me as quickly as possible. But be careful now. The more you carry, the more it will drain your life force. Don't push yourself too hard. I'm trying my best. It's okay, I'm in Celestial. I have a lot of health. I'd like to keep the wayfinder in my Accelerate! I, through context, I can kind of get the gist of what appetence means. Sort of just burying your head in the sand. Being a bit of a door, doormat. An ocean trench. Allowing something to happen through negligence, that, that I guess is kind of what it means. But I don't know, has anyone got a good de definition there in the live chat? Oh wow, the giant projection of Zodja there. The Return to Zodja and heal her, that to heal her. Bring it back to me. Unshakable they are. Traitors. Or are you the traitor, Pather? I need to focus. Keep the big one off me. I'll finish the spell. Can you handle this, Soja? Oh my god, wow. Yeah. We're with you. We're right here. Oh, that's a cool looking wyvern right there. Sorrow. Oh wow, it's, got, it's almost like a totally different design. It's not like fleshy or bony. It's got these really cool, like, larvary, like, red lines on it, though. Sort of a new take. Oh, look, it floats me. I was just about to say. They're treating this like a giant epic encounter, but all the mobs were fighting a tiny, <laughs> and especially on such a giant plateau. But no, 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 this is this is awesome. Wow, I need to learn what it does as well. What was that weird flap thing? They let me move my camera out so much. What the fuck? Jesus Christ, they let me move my camera out. Look at this. Oh, we can try and break the bar. I don't know. Oh. Alright, he's flying off. Wow, so he even doesn't have a, like, death animation, he just flies away. Oh, or did we kill him during his break bar thing, so the animation was just a bit weird because of how the timing worked there. At all costs, I got the relic of Caracosa. So hold on, that Wyvern was called Sorrow, why would I get the relic of Caracosa from that? Is it because once upon a time that Wyvern was called Caracosa? Or am I about to meet Caracosa in this, uh, next, uh, like, cutscene? Heal other nearby allies when you successfully combo a field with a blast finisher. That's the one we read earlier. 
It's interesting to have like a supporty Healy thing on themed with this demon realm. This could be really interesting for certain support builds. My first thought actually was engineer support that has access to a lot of blasts and a lot of fields, especially through medkit. But it said any combo, didn't it? Hold on, is that any combo? Oh no, blast finisher. Yeah. All right, hello, Zoja. Right, that should do it. Quickly, everyone, back through that rift before it collapses on us. The Wayfinder and I will venture farther into the realm. Follow. We'll make toward refuge. Wayfinder, keep your eyes up and your mind sharp as obsidian. Our paths part for now. Be safe. Wait, I want to ask you something, Isgarin. Wait, Pather. Wait. I want to leave. <laughs> Oh, what the fuck? She's just going through there. So we're just TPing around. Hold on, though. Pump the brakes. If we go NPC. Is Garin said, I haven't seen this realm of existence in dot, dot, dot. So he was here before. Did we know that from the original release? Does anybody know? Since when did Guild Wars 2 become so generic? It's always the same plateau boss, is it? I mean, yeah, we fought that Wyvern a bunch. We fought Wyverns a bunch before. That 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 Wyvern did actually have some new anim animations though, which is something. You know, I wouldn't. Have, I actually didn't expect that. And it had a new skin. This plateau doesn't. You know, this isn't a circular arena, so I wouldn't say that this is totally generic. And in fact, I quite. I've, I'm quite interested in. Um, well, let's just leave NPC chat on, I guess. Uh, in these. These are all very new, weird-looking tree things. They have, like, tongues coming out of them. Grace. It's very Realm of Tormenty. If I see a wall just filled with eyes staring at me... I'll feel right at home. Would I like to continue to direct? So we got another instance. They like doing this now. Have you noticed they chain instances out of instances? Maybe it's easier to diagnose bugs and stuff. Our air is heavy, but you can breathe it. You have before. We're not far from camp. Rest a moment. We've been met with excitement after excitement. Even I am tired. Thanks. Take it in. And we'll start moving. Don't rush yourself. This is really... There's something weird about this. I feel very odd how, like, the commander's just chilling with a demon alone in this fucked up realm. And we're just taking it at her word. I mean, she did save our life. She did help us in the fight against Ceres. But, you know, I, I, it feels a bit odd. I love this, by the way, this clean circular plateau that we're on. So let's see what we got now. What region are we in? We're actually not in a named region at the moment. So I can just talk. This is interesting. They just let me chill and stop. This is good for me because if I want to just chat and ramble about a bunch of stuff, <laughs> I can finally do it. You know, it's like a little break <laughs> for the Let's Players. Sit for an achievement. Oh my god, legend, really? Oh, look at that. Heavy air. Take a seat after your tiring travels. Oh my god, I feel like I'm a couple of minutes in and we've got three of the achievements. We're halfway done with the uh, the final reward. <laughs> Hello, Pather. Now this is unlike anything interior. Take the time you need to adapt to your surroundings and let me know when you're ready to go. Okay, I'm good. I wasn't expecting Nios to be so serene. I wonder if I'd sat on a chair, that would have counted. I am curious. More... blood, I think? Less of this. Your shock is not too surprising. Your first impressions of my world were birthed in the temple of Femme. That cursed place. Oh, this is really good. Sarah said that Febe was... killed. He did. Yes. He was. He said his head reached the ceiling. Teacher, a guide. He felt the things about Epoch that I do now. I couldn't save him then. Are there fucking Massar in here? Fallen, maybe we'd have put Epoch down sooner. 
This is cool. They're reusing the cherry blossom trees from EOD, but You're made them purple. Back against Epark now. Ramses That's what we need to focus on. Right now. Quickly. Well, the timing there was a bit weird. <laughs> it just seemed like she rudely interrupted us. <laughs> yeah, this is really good. I, this is not what I was expecting, but it is it is very alien and very Go weird. In a good way. Oh, that was a good line as well. So then we have like the demon version of the Mordrum Guard. How'd that feel? Excruciating? It's kind of a little bit like EOD, you know, where like it was all the mobs we'd already fought, but now they had a void Starting filter on them. The bigger picture. We must find Arena and the others. So she is alive. And thriving, last I saw her. We located her and her fierce entourage of Astral Ward not long ago. I'm still in awe as to how they survived at all. But if Ebark has us sniffed out... Let's keep moving. Any sign of you? Whoa. Oh, there's oh, Arena. Oh, wow, that Damn. echoey effect. Ugh. Man, I really want to see more of this place. A thousand storms. This is really a whole open world map. How much of it overlaps with where we've already been, I wonder? This feels like the kind of place a heart vendor or something might stand a minute. Wow, what is this? Some kind of bucket that maybe we throw items into? Oh, actually, speaking of achievements, if I go not to Story Journal, but if I go instead to Secrets of the Obscure, here you go, Inner Territory. There you go, there's a lot to do here. Inner Naos, Hator's Territory. Find Arena in the camp. Hello? About time. I smell excitement. Whoa. Maybe I'm confusing fear. Were you back in Tyria again? And I brought a friend. The Pact Commander. Interesting choice. Arena, I... It's good to see you alive. What happened in Gendarin... Man. Surprise to us both. Now, eyes on the threat. This is Cormir. This is what happened in Nightfall. That's very cool. Okay. They have icons, but you can't speak. This is crazy. Ramses here is a demon naga. That's so cool. I really like that, that you get an allied one to this stand there and speak, because you can properly look at the model and how much detail there is there. It's really good. What a bizarre idea for an ally as well. That's pretty cool. I'm going to double CC these guys. A brilliant ember. Mess in there. Never felt better. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, obviously, this gameplay is, you know, there's not really anything to talk about, but this is what Guild Wars 2 story gameplay is. I mean, if you're not over that fact at this point, 11 years later, then I don't know when you will be. There's no such thing as hard mode story. There's no... It's always going to be just press a couple of buttons and then walk somewhere and then dialogue. Press a couple of buttons and walk somewhere. And <coughs> Unless you're a new player and you don't have a great build, then you probably get a bit more of an engaging experience. A swirling gust. The game wants to patch right now, so I might get put on empty maps. Oh really, was there another patch? I, that's interesting, because I haven't seen any notifications for that. You're not sure if it's a Massart Saul reference, but later there's a reference to Demetrius. I'm not sure if it's Arena Net using the same word, mind you. Well, they are. It's it's they Greek again, exhilarate. right? Like that's the thing. Demetra was a Greek word, because I think it's I, I think the the so for people that don't know, there's a village in Crita. 
Lita got attacked by the char and then the Massar came along and saved Kryo from the char. You can see it in the bonus mission pack. And then in Guild Wars 2, you can go to the ruins of Demetra. I used to call it Demetra, but it's Demetra. I believe when they wrote that, it was just sort of a loose reference to the goddess Deme uh, Demeter, which again, I think is ancient Greece stuff. And it, since this is all ancient Greek stuff as well, but I'm sure their eventual absence will be noticed. The barrier will keep our location shielded for now. We can't breach the interior, but they're also barred from us. Wayfinder, you've met Arena. They were secretly snooping through my camp. And Ramses, well, Ramses speaks for himself. Curious, the way you smell. That fucking and guy. who is this Hator? Oh, what would be the appropriate Tyrian familial connection? My cousin. And one of Epoch's prized fang suckers. That guy's got a crazy sword. You offed her mate based on how many she sent. Managed to take down most of them before you got back. Ceres, I assume. Now that Hator knows of this place, we better stop her from sharing the news. Okay, so... So Hator is kind of the boss of the week, so to speak. Hator is the next threat to take down. But yeah, and the Massar in general as well was all Greek stuff, like their names were ancient Greek. I always got confused with Latin, but it was ancient Greek. And like, because uh, I was writing that Stellaris name list with the mod update about three weeks ago. And I went through and I put a lot more detail in there and really looked. And I used like ChatGPT to help me find cool new Massart names. You know, because they were basically a, a, a Greek name and title style thing. Um, so yeah, Naos, Greek stuff as well. It's quite cool. So I don't think, I don't think it's a... It's not a coincidence, but it may also not be deliberate. I don't know what the word is for that, but yeah, look at that sword. Was that in the previous patch? He doesn't want to speak to us. That guy's got a blue one. I imagine Frodo's relieved about Arena, but disappointed he can't be here. I didn't have the chance to ask him. A huntress would rather cope with her progenitor on her own. When Isgarin's little gate is open, they will meet. When her contingent first arrived with you, thank whatever dubious entity you pray to, that they found a place to hide. They managed to survive, while Cryptus's eyes were pointed at Tyria. Only a few lives were lost to the hostility of our world. I'm glad you found them before things started escalating. And so am I. Ramses has remained at Arena's side, helping the Tyrians acclimate. I think they've taken to our realm of barbarity. Arena is a force of nature, and I'm sure she'd be fine on her own. Now rest. Adjust. The ward has crops that are at least tolerable for your consumption. Really? You can eat and drink here? That's interesting. <clears throat> so I guess this will load us into the map. It's not it, showing off. It's really interesting to me that the story is these guys are here. Because Arena Net would have known that that's what they wanted to do, which means that at the end of Secrets of the Obscure, they could have pointed that out. They could have said, hey, they're at Astral Ward alive in Naos right now. But if they had done that, that would have created... I think the reason they didn't do it is because if they had, it would have created this, like, really... It would have... This Garum would have been like, right, let's go fucking get them right now. You know, it would have seemed very cruel to wait the 90 days before we actually go in. Does that make sense? So they withheld that little bit of information, even though apparently Paytha knew about these guys the whole time. She just didn't tell us. Until now, you know, which is kind of a betrayal, really. It's kind of fucked up that she didn't tell us for ages. But the story's not going to go into that because the only reason she didn't tell us is because they did it. They needed an excuse for the night. Does that make sense? Am I thinking too much into it there? But there you go. Yes, she says, I wanted to talk to you about... Guild Wars always does this as well. Like, okay, so we know her because of that 
the whole thing at the camp in Gendarren Fields. And it's like... <sighs> that took, like, two minutes. All right, I think it took me, like, half an hour. But still, it's such a brief little moment... And it was a whole crowd of people. I don't really remember the, exactly what Arena was doing there. You know, Guild Wars does this. There'll be, you know, be a tiny flash of a moment in the story. But it's treated like it was a big event, you know, or a bigger event than I seem to have felt it was as I was playing it. Anyway, I want to talk... That's not a criticism, by the way. It's just sometimes like Guild Wars feels. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about... Before you try to apologize again, it's fine. When we were pulled into that portal in Gendarren Fields, I was uneasy at first. I gathered what astral ward I could find. We lost a few along the way. Managed to find an alcove just out of sight. Astral ward survival tactics. And then Paytha and Ramses tracked us down just a few days ago. Good timing, too, as our rations were growing dangerously low. Well, I'm glad you made it in one piece, then. Your dad was worried. It's a relief to hear that old Fro didn't throw himself into a fight he couldn't crawl out of. He's protective. And stubborn. I'll leave Fro to you then. Thanks. Now I need to attend to the ward. Come find me later. I'm sure we've got plenty for you to do. Is it me or is she a really short Norn? I mean, I'm an Asura and I'm like nearly up to her waist. I thought, thought Norn were a bit taller than that, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> speaking of Norn, by the way, oh my god, Cossage sent me an amazing message in Discord. There was a little detail. There's obviously quite a few story details I haven't covered yet because we haven't finished the post-game stuff. Um, I must admit to you guys, I have now ravenously read elements of the wiki. So I do basically know what's going on with one of the stories and... It's pretty cool. We go back to the Bloodstone Cave. So th there's some stuff that I know. Anyway, one thing that was quite buried in Secrets of the Obscure. Really cool detail and interesting hint about the future. In fact, I, I can go to Discord now and just read the comment that he gave me. Because it is, it is really exciting. It's about the Norn. And he said... Frode had some additional dialogue after Mabon's death, but he lacks the additional dialogue marker, so I missed it in my playthrough because it wasn't telegraphed by the game. But you can press F on him, and there's something really creepy about the Norn here. This is what he says, right? He says, Wayfinder I, there was a time when I'd prefer the ward no, uh, not see me in mord mourning. I want to be a leader that they can lean on in times of trouble, but leaders mourn too, and Mabon, and we say, well, he meant a lot to you. And Frode says, I've never told you how I came into the ward, have I? I was once a shaman of Worm, but Worm abandoned me with dire timing. I witnessed something terrible, my hunting party. And then the commander says, we don't have to talk about this now. And he says, no, 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 I'm fine. He says, I witnessed Sejim, my friend, get stuck between transformations while we were hunting in the north. Something dot, dot, dot wrong happened. Something dark. And I couldn't trust the spirits after that. And the commander says, that sounds horrible. And we say, my faith was gone. He says, my faith was gone. I left my homestead. I couldn't look my family in the eye. I didn't think Arena would miss me anyway. I left to be on my own. And then we just listen. Is Garin and Wayno found me next, having witnessed what I did. They brought me to Amnitas. I didn't truly heal until he sat with me, Mabon. He helped me work through that trauma. I knew him briefly, but I know Mabon was good. That he, And then we say that he was. When Arena came looking for me, he, he was the one that brought her here. I thought we needed each other, and we did. Irina, if she's out there, we'll find her. He says, thanks, Wayfinder. I think I'll linger just a few moments longer. So they leave it kind of cryptic what happened. Like, did he mistake, make a mistake? Worm abandoned him with dire timing. He witnessed something terrible. His whole hunting party suffered for it. And a friend got stuck between transformations. Something dark and wrong happened. And I couldn't trust the spirits after that. How cool is that? 
Because I, I, and the reason I'm saying that to you guys now is I was looking at Arena here talking about her height or whatever, and I was thinking, you know, another facet of the Norn that we haven't been seeing much of, people used to talk about this a lot with Bram as well, is the whole transformation thing, you know. And, uh, and I thought, oh shit, yeah, there's that really cool lore about the, the transformation. So I don't know what that is, really, or whether that's a story they'll be dealing with s sometime soon, whether we'll ever get a tangible answer with it, whether it's just kind of something, a creepy twist and expansion on the Nord Nord world burning. But it is really awesome, or whether it's, you know, something that we'll get a mini X pack about later. But it seems like Arena Net really like Froden Arena. They're getting a lot of uh, story here, aren't they? I swear I just saw that chest piece shine, but I think what it actually was was the shining from my hat, and I thought it was further back there. But yeah, um, so I think uh, I think that's it for this for this area. And now we're in the full map, right? In a nice wayfinder. Can you hear me? Several hours Arena. later. I can hear you just fine. Good. One of the volunteer Astral Ward cast an enchantment that better focuses our communication spells. Works in Nios now. Paytha and I are at camp. I'm catching her up on... developments. Things you probably need to hear, too. On my way. That was crazy. This spud just walked up to me and waved at me, and I waved back at the exact same time. That was awesome. Oh, no, no, there's a meta going on. With Ignatius defeated. Haythas forces gain access to Haythas Gate. Arena teleports everyone out in four minutes. Ooh. Oh, this is the best moment. I'll tell you what, the best moment for playing Guild Wars 2 patch always is that first step into a new map. Eerie. I saw it happen. But why? And how? We're more susceptible to possession when we're scared, right? So... So... You're telling me the Cryptus are scared of us. Well, they sure aren't scared of me. Or you. <laughs> Speak for yourself. I'm pretty imposing. Think about it. What if Lear or Dagda showed up on the tower doorstep with their own Astral Ward army? Where would they get their own army? Man, are you dense. Paytha! They're scared of Paytha! Wow, that's interesting. So what, if we make them scared of us, we convert them to our own forces? It does seem pretty dodgy. It's like a Desmina situation, don't you guys think? You know, in Desmina in Wing 5. We see there's all this chaos and Doom is a threat again, and we, we deal with, the, with Doom, right? Just as we're dealing with Epoch now. But as soon as we deal with Doom, it's like there's a power vacuum, and it's like, okay, so the guy that we helped, in that story's case, it's Desmina, Okay, they, they'll take control, and it's like, are you cool? Are you going to be good? And it suddenly seems really dodgy. It's like, uh, did we do the right thing? <laughs> you know, and it's it's similar here. I, I feel like the, we're putting Paythor in a position of power, and she's not necessarily an ally as soon as that happens, which is a cool bit, bit of tension to be going through. That's a really interesting story there from them in the tent there. Yeah, uh, cool stuff, guys. I'm going to stop it here, though, because it is super late, all right? Um, I don't want the video to be too long. I want people who are asleep right now to be able to wake up, see it, enjoy it at their leisure, and then we'll all come back together for the next part at a more reasonable hour where we'll actually explore the map and we'll go through and uh, continue along. Also, you know, doing the whole patch in a single day would be kind of lame. So, yeah, and besides, we've been going for about two hours here. So thank you, everybody. Uh, those of you who stayed up late, those of you who managed to catch this live as well, because, you know, they're so irregular Let's and it's through. so difficult Leave to know away, when they're coming. Seems like we're uh, thank you, guys. It's been really, really nice to have some company. And, and yeah, so far I'm enjoying it. Definitely. Look, look this is a good place to end as well because I feel like we've still got a lot left, you know. Uh, so yeah, and if you guys want to expand on anything I've talked about or, or whatever, please feel free to leave comments. I'll go. What I'm going to do is before the next part is I'm going to read through all the normal YouTube comments. And if there's any really cool and interesting ones, I'll talk about them. I'll respond to them in the next part. I like doing that. I might even screenshot them and put them on the screen and stuff. So yeah, uh, cheers, everybody. Thank you. Uh, take it easy now and uh, have a good night. Sweet dreams, guys. Oh, 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 let's press M. Oh, no, 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 we are just on the left. Okay. They have just sort of put it there. I mean, I think this is fine. If they have some kind of, like, arty, like, foggy mist, it somewhat makes sense. Oh, also, 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 I know I just did an outro. Let's see what happens at the gate. 
the under construction gate. I mean, when I moused over it there, it still said under construction, right? The POI. So in theory, it hasn't changed. But maybe it has now. Let's go have a look. And yeah, there is actually a patch as well. That's another reason I kind of want to stop it now. Because uh, you were right in chat, there is a patch. Unless that only just triggered. But it was when I got into the new map that it, it popped up there. When is the next part? Well, ideally, I'd like it to be tomorrow at, um, you know, around 5 is when I'd most like to be doing it. Please take that with a grain of salt, though, because um, I have because of what I did with Halloween yesterday, I, I haven't been up for very long right now, so we'll see. But I might be able to set an alarm and just sort that out. No, it's still closed. Interesting. Uh, so, yeah. Um, but thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Really, uh, much appreciated, and I'll see you next time. Take care, guys.